Here's Mike Winters. And good morning. It is 24 minutes after 8 o'clock. And joining us in studio this morning, Mayor Tim Jennings back with us. Good morning, sir. How are you doing today? Good morning. How are you? Doing good. Doing good. Well, for folks that aren't aware, tonight is uh, the scheduled monthly uh, city council meeting. Uh, it takes place the, the second Thursday every month, 6 p.m. And, uh, the, of course, the meetings are always at the convention center there in the city chamber uh, building or room there. And uh, as always, the public is invited and encouraged to come and be a part of it and listen in on the proceedings and things. Always don't forget, if you can't make it in person, you can always watch it uh, on the city's website, roswell-nm.gov. So so uh, you can watch and hear it for yourself. But uh, I'm thinking right now, we're sitting here in June time frame. I, I guess you guys are wrapping up budget talks and trying to finalize and putting the dots on the I's and J's and all that stuff to, to get the budget uh, sent up to Santa Fe, right? Yep, yeah, we were elected March 1st, and the city had their budget hearings. They didn't want to have uh, their staff in when they put their budget together in March. And then so we started in office on April 1st, and we first thing we had to do is do a budget. And for half the council, that was a little bit different because everybody was new. They sure. were new. And, so. and sometimes uh, if you're not well-versed in government finances and stuff, it is a little different than oh. householder business budgets. They have... And they little, got a, so a learning curve there. A little yeah, bit. a little different lingo. Yeah. And, you know, the methods of operation, it's, uh, I mean, to me, this seems, ex uh, this is a new process. It seems extremely slow because everything has to only meet once a month and everything goes through a committee. And, and sure. we're looking with, uh, there's 794 pages of paper Oof. that are in our agenda that we discussed today. And, and <laughs> That's you know, a literally a, an epic novel. Yeah. And, <laughs> you know, at some point in time, I think we need to restructure the council. I, I mean, you've got five committees with four people on it. Gotcha. Well, four is, you know, things are two and two. Now, what happens? And, and You need an odd number there to get so a decision at least if coming out. If you have four with five members on it, you know, now you have one less chairman, so that you know, then there's not a chairman for somebody from each ward or, you know, five five different chairmen. I mean, there's uh, – that creates some problems. But uh, – uh, and, and quick question, you know, we talk about some of these committees. Are these committees that are just city councilors or are these some of the committees that include city councilors and members of the public and other – because I know they've got both. Uh, yeah, this is just – these are just members of the of the council. The city council committees mm -hmm. within the – gotcha. And we have some other committees that we're, we're going to do some appointments on some of them, but – you know, even then, my, like the airport committee, and I made my appointments, which I'm, you know, supposed to do, and uh, some of them have to be go back before the uh, committee that uh, that they're overseeing, or mm -hmm. that they're like the air has to go back through the uh, the buildings committee or whatever for for airport or public safety. Some of them have to go back, some of them don't. Just gotcha. Depends how they're set up, and gotcha. So. That's real different. So our airport's been delayed another month. He getting getting them together, and uh, there's a lot there's a lot to do. But you know the airport is is uh, with a seventy thirty plan that we have. I mean, it's it's very difficult to to get in there and understand it. Why that if you have a group of people that want to do a march for hope for cancer, sure, and you get every every economic level of people in Roswell wanting to do the march and, and all the different minority groups, everybody is in there and they all want to do a march. And then we have to come up and figure out a way to pay to use the facilities and everything. So then all of a sudden, then that gets to be expensive and, and you have to pay for policemen and everything else. Well, then, then the money's not going for a walk to hope to stop cancer, sure like we've, but we've done for years. Now it's all of a sudden it's going to pay for the policemen. Sure. And, um, uh, you know, uh, it, sometimes this the seventy thirty concept is is difficult to understand why everything has to pay its way. Gotcha. Why was the why was the drag stick paying five hundred dollars a year? Now nobody out there gets a salary for anything. Anything that they made at the drag strip goes back into the track. Mm -hmm. Everybody volunteers, and then they they went from that. I think they said what they told me went from five hundred dollars a year to nineteen thousand dollars a month. Well, yeah. there's you know. 
I mean, there's no way that works. Well, it, and 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 the, to the public, that looks like the city just wants them out because they've got plans yeah. for that land. I mean, and I don't know if that's true or not true, but the writing on the wall certainly looks that way. To, you know, and I mean, from an outside looking in, that's yeah, well, the perspective that, we have. You know, one of the things on 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 them that was one of the things that they were told that uh, they had other people wanted the land, Mystic wanted the land or something, and then when we had that public hearing on the rate increases at the at of rent out there they said we don't want your land so just who knows who's telling who the truth sure <laughs> and so then you get into uh things and you know the increase on mystic went from uh from six thousand dollars to twenty four thousand and mm-hmm. stuff i mean it was you know 400 percent increase i mean it was just that's not practical it's in not any practical sense of the word yeah when you look at the condition of a lot of the facilities out there they're 70 years old and they're they're worn out. And you want to charge twenty grand a month or and, whatever and, for you that? Know, yeah. And uh, <laughs> you know, I, I mean, you know, we're going through it now. I think uh, with Sydney Gutierrez School. I mean, here it's the number one charter school in the state, and they've just they've spent everything they could do to get a lease to expand their school from six, seven, and eight to to kindergarten through eighth grade, and uh, so they've done all this stuff to expand it, and uh, got classrooms and everything else there, and then. If they're, you know, the air conditioner was out, it didn't work when my kids went there 18 years ago. It was bad. <laughs> and all of a sudden then it's, uh, you know, they want to double their rent and everything else. Well, they spent all the money that they had to get to get uh, the other portable classrooms and lease all those classrooms that are out there so sure. they can expand the school. Uh, it's the number one charter school in the state. And and by far, I mean it's done very well. Sure. So, so it, it, something. So it, it, is is it looking at this seventy thirty rule and and well, and, and reworking it? Is that is that the fix well, you think I, or? Well, I don't know. I, I just, you know, it. It's like the adult center. Yeah. I mean, where are we? We had a thriving adult center, and sure. now it's gone. And then, and uh, we got to figure out the way where it doesn't drain the city, but at the same time support it so it thrives and. You know, it, it is a, a, a tricky balance, but at the same time, you can't gouge them because they, they don't have the ability to cover that. Yeah. They just don't. And, uh, and th- there's a reason these are non profit mom and pop stuff. I mean, Sydney Gutierrez, yeah. but you, you know, know what I mean? It's, it's, you're, 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 it's hand-to-mouth type budgeting and things like that that's going on at both of these situations. And, and uh, to just slap a, all right. We're gonna charge you five hundred. Oh, and by the way, now we're gonna we're gonna increase that about ten thousand percent on you. <laughs> and I'm just throwing a number out, but you know, and, but you know what I mean. It, it 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 that's not feasible for anyone. And and I understand that the city has to money. You know, we got We got We got a budget. We got to spend here. And you know how. But I think we don't want to sabotage things we know are good and successful. Because you know what I'm saying, you, you, yeah, you know the so the, that's the trick that the city council has to figure out. Whether it be a drag strip or whether it's people exercising, and, yeah, and uh, all those things are different things that add to the character of your community. Which, sure, uh, it it's very diverse, and diversity always leads to greater understanding and greater yeah. uh, greater little. Uh, uh, little nuances that, that make your town attractive Absolutely. to other people. And so that, that stuff's it's real important. And you get people exercising, keeps them healthy. And, you know, they go, they used to go perform at nursing homes and stuff like that. I mean, you know, it's just stuff that makes your town, gives it class and character. Sure. Well, and, 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 and this is the kind of stuff that attracts more professionals to our community. You know, the hospitals, law enforcement, city, everyone's looking for more qualified people to be a part of their ranks. Uh, they look at when they come to Roswell. They look at things like what what's available to do, what amenities they have, what's the crime rate look like, how schools look like. These are all factors people weigh when they yeah. come to meet. And so, so when you take away or detract from those, you're hurting the big picture. In in in, you know, in the museum, we have a clay studio, and the director's been there for forty plus years. And mm-hmm. Had a contract, everything was fine, and all of a sudden now we have to make her an employee. Now, you know, I don't know how all that happens all of a sudden, but, you know, everything was fine. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, it, it just, in, in that museum, charging people, it's, uh, so we, we did 
work at the zoo. And mm-hmm. then, but then, uh, because we locked up the zoo and, and in that we locked up the, uh, the, the pond over there where kids used to go fish and mm-hmm. charge them to go fish now. Well, before that, the state would stock it if you didn't have, if you didn't have it locked up. If you have it locked up, then the state won't stock it. So now we have to buy the fish. Okay. And it was, are we going to, uh, when you look at all that, are, are we better off having the state stock it and having people fish whenever they want? Uh, well, and I think what we could do there is you get various agencies along and you turn those into fishing clinics and all kinds of other great things. You know what I mean? It, mm-hmm. That uh, that don't That maybe could generate some money. To help mm-hmm. offset some of that cost, you know, I mean, there's, there, you know, and I get, you know, it, it is a tricky balance because, you know, there's probably people that never go to these facilities and have a, a mindset of why should I pay for something I don't use, mm-hmm. but at the same time, you don't want to price these things out where no one's going to use them. So where's that balance? And we got to kind of figure that out a little bit. And that's and and to be honest. Is there a right or wrong answer? I don't know because should should people that want to use it regularly invest something in it? I could see that argument, but mm-hmm. do you want to make it so pricey that now they're not going to utilize it anymore? No, you don't want to do that. How do we find that balance? And that's that's really the the big issue here, you know. And all the way down to little leagues and everything. Else. Absolutely, and soccer yeah. leagues. What do we charge to use the parks? And yeah, and you know, I know when we developed that park, the like the soccer park, we it was set up and designed the way it was designed so that you moved the soccer fields. Every year you moved them like 75 feet over. Mm-hmm. And so when you did that, then you kept the ground in front of the goals from being depleted of grass because that's where everybody plays and, and packing so hard uh, when you just moved them. But now we haven't moved them you know, for a while. So, so they're probably now, doing moving. Now they're, we have it all the, all the grass is dead and stuff. So, and then you got to replant. <laughs> Receive. Whereas before you so could have, it's kind of like a farming concept it. where you rotate crops and things like that yep. to keep and the, well, you know, yeah. and that's just what you need to do. Just move them a little bit. Yeah. And you have to restripe the fields, but they had, I know originally they had them all set up to where they were on a line and you, you could just move them over and move everything 75 feet and you get it off the playing area and, you know, and then in a couple of years, you move back, you know, and uh, 75 feet one way, 75 feet or 150 back the next time. And then so they stopped back. doing that, I guess. Or Yeah, they I'm haven't sure done I'm, it. I'm so. guessing COVID may, but who knows? I mean, yeah. they blame everything on COVID if you want, I guess. But Well, <laughs> no, that's not COVID. That's just management. It's management, lack of management. Gotcha. Gotcha. So, so yeah, so it's. So really, it's we talk about you know the money for the resources, but also being good stewards of said mm-hmm. resources is, you know, it's designed a certain way. If we're not doing it that way, we're shortening the life of it here, and so we got to balance, take care of what we got, but at the same time improve and provide a way. And it, and it's a tricky. That's this is why you know there's a light of lightning rods when you're the yeah, mayor and city council lot. because because it's these are and and you talk to twelve people and get twelve different answers on how you should do this. So um, it, it's 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 that's. This is why these city council meetings get pretty long, I'm imagine. Well, yeah. We, hopefully, we can get through them quick. Sure. You know. Um, so let's. Uh, while we got a chance, is there any uh, like a couple item things that we definitely want to make sure we we spotlight for tonight? Uh, I know a lot of it's going to be budget talk here, but a couple of things on the agenda we want to make sure we let folks yeah, know about. We have a lot of public hearings on uh, items four through. Uh, let's see what number that is. Four through twelve are for. Uh, public hearings and and those are on things like liquor license for Texas Roadhouse okay and La uh, La Grande Victoria on 401 North Richardson that's a little restaurant wants to have a uh, liquor license there to serve beer okay. and uh, we have a lot of those coming up on and then then we have some marijuana uh, businesses there that are looking for and uh, f- approval so they can. And for those businesses, this is their last phase, right? Once if they get a green light tonight, then they're they're free to do yeah. their thing, right? Uh-huh. Gotcha. Yeah. I know we've got a couple that have already gone through that system, but we got the next batch that'll go before the city council tonight to get those. Yep, and then we approved. have some resolutions on cleanup, on uh, on different properties that we have there that are uh, dilapidated, and need to be cleaned up. Uh, we had some things on the lodgers tax that went through on. Um, 
uh, with the using some of the lodgers tax money, which are kind of interesting. I know we we're looking to put four thousand uh, dollars to reimburse expenses on uh, trying to get the Wool Bowl back up and running with a junior college. Uh, uh, football game, which yeah. might be that would be an interesting deal well, if we can. Get and MMI that has been playing. They played some of their games uh, on most of their home games actually in the Wool Bowl last yeah. year, and and I think they're looking to move the Broncos as that to play all their games. I mean, home yeah. games on Saturday out there. So yeah, that that'd be a nice thing. And uh, by yeah. the way, if y'all looking for a fun game to go to on a Saturday afternoon, go check out an NMMI football game. I mean, they're the national champs in JUCO college. Mm-hmm. They're exciting to watch. If you're a football fan and you've never been out to an MMI game, go check out the Broncos and watch yeah. them on Saturday afternoons. They were good. And, you know, I mean, they, we played one of the pregames before the, the championship. And, uh, and you know, they uh, they won that. And, and, you know, this could maybe this could be a precursor. If we can get this, maybe end up being the national championship for the junior JUCOs. We could be Might hosting be, a bowl I mean, game or something. It could be a something. good yeah. deal if we could get it. And, sure. And, uh you know, it's funny that the the women came in national. They were runner up in volleyball mm-hmm. and, and the football team. And we and the team that beat we beat, they beat us in volleyball. We beat in football. For th- so, <laughs> and uh, the small they, circle sometimes, right? <laughs> yeah. And I was talking to the general. He said that out of their championship team, that uh, I think he said twenty four of the students that were on that team had a contract to go to a a, div- a, div- a division, division one school. Division one school. Uh, or, it's amazing. You know, or on to college, a That's... college school uh, before well, before Christmas. So, well, and uh, MMI has never had a problem cranking out leaders. Out. So, <laughs> well, good. Yeah, so, but so that'll be good. But but uh, just you know, if you're looking for some fall fun, if your Friday nights don't satisfy your football itch, then get on out to a couple Saturday games there yeah. for MMI. And so. you know, some of the other things we did put some money in the jazz festival and then the state fair. Uh, Can I ask a quick question? Uh, yep. You know, now that we're coming out of COVID, what's what's Lodgers tax funding look like? Is it starting to get, you know, because for folks that don't know, Lodgers tax money comes from when people stay in hotels and all of that stuff. Um, did COVID dip into those numbers at all, or, or well, it, did they stay pretty steady? It, it's it's hurt us on on people traveling and stuff. So that's that's hurt us some. And then we, you know, we pledged a lot of the money to. Used to get for lodgers tax, we pledge more of that money to remodel the convention center. Mm-hmm. So we've got, so that cut into the funds, but we are getting some some money back. But it's starting to people are traveling and things, so it's starting to replenish here pretty yeah, good. Yeah, you know they put some money in the uh, tr- bottomless lakes triathlon and the in the state fair, the Roswell State Fair, which is our oldest fair in the state, mm-hmm. the Roswell Symphony. So, you know we we put some money back in into some of those areas with Good. that and then i'm sure they're very thankful for those well let's hope so because <laughs> so. you know for some of these organizations that's the difference between ability to have it and not have the event so yeah i yeah, mean in, in our some of our new business we have some uh discussion on the uh, chisholm park or it's on virginia it's that the old chisholm school where mm-hmm. they're putting in a park and uh we have another thing with uh some agreements with economic development and uh, corporation, and uh, we have to look. I think we're going to do something on the uh, where to put the rocket. I think they. Uh, oh, the old slide. Yeah, the, the rocket old slide. slide yeah. yeah, where that's all. Where we're going to put that? So we have a couple of, uh, zoning cases and things we're going to work on on that. So okay. it, it's all. It's a pretty. Uh... Pretty much, uh, you know, outside of the, the the budget stuff, pretty much atypical normal city council meeting fair yep. for the most part. You know, proving this and that, getting uh, getting some of these uh, liquor license and, and cannabis uh, pass through, and then, uh, like I said, dealing with the, the usual derelict facilities. Which, by the way, folks, if if you don't know, if it, if when when it gets to the point of city council is talking about derelict buildings or, or properties and things like that. There was a gauntlet gamut of steps that took place before it's sitting. So when you hear someone being, you know, property being uh, either annexed or whatever is being done to it because it's not maintained, they've gotten countless letters, countless discussions. It wasn't, 
They just didn't up and say one day we're going to annex this property or we're going to charge or clean it up and charge some whatever whatever countermeasures the city has to do. I, I just want to let people know that there was ample opportunity by the private party to take care of this thing before it gets to the city council. I just mm-hmm. so when people hear this, like they don't trust me. It was a long before it gets to this level. There was a lot of behind the scenes work happening. To get to basically everything fell through to get to this level, yeah. basically. So I just want to put that on people's radar when you hear those kind of things. It's the city. Trust me, they're not in the business of wanting annexing property and doing this stuff. They 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 do it for the safety and health of the community and and because let's face it, the, we know derelict structures, derelict buildings attract derelict things. It's just the the nature of the beast. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so we. The city does what it can to try to mitigate that kind of stuff. So, so uh, just I just wanted to throw that caveat out there. So when people hear that, we mean to. No, trust me. They, this isn't like just new coming up to these folks. They, they, they've probably years of going back and forth before we get to this stage. So, um, and if I'm wrong there, please tell me. You know, speak out there. But, but I just want to kind of get that out to people out there so they understand a little bit on how that works. Yeah, a lot of those structures, if they. If people aren't using them, and it's uh, a lot of times we have a lot of homeless that break into them, and then uh, and and then other people come along, and then they kick the walls out, and they steal the electric wire and all mm-hmm. that stuff. So there's a lot of problems that come along with uh, group that we have in uh, in dealing with uh, the problems we have between yeah. homeless and and I would also ask this ask every neighbor that lives next to that and see how they feel about it <laughs> and they'll be happy to tell you because you get to hear about it they live it every day they see what's going in and out of that place they see what's going on in their neighborhoods and they don't want it and uh, and if it was your neighborhood you wouldn't want it either so um, understand that <laughs> yep. then we have some appointments to boards and commissions for parks and the library board and good deal Keep browse with beautiful and planning and so any fun stuff tonight we honoring anybody I know a lot of times they start no, out and get uh, you know a, a youth group winning something or uh, a group of people doing some none of that tonight no, we just need to get through by hopefully get through before midnight well hopefully you get to so. the meeting will end on the same day it started <laughs> Uh, let's hope. But no, it's a uh, so. good deal. So it sounds like full say again, folks. Uh, the meeting will take place tonight at 6 p.m. It's going to be at the Roswell Convention and Civic Center there in the city council chambers. Uh, the public is more than welcome to come and be a part of the audience to watch. If you do like to speak, um, the you sign up beforehand. And uh, at the appropriate time, the mayor will give you the floor to, to speak if you'd like to speak on a particular yeah. topic. Um, and if you're watching online, there's a if you go to roswell-nm.gov, you can watch. If you don't have time or, you know, got the kids and fixing dinner and want to put it on the background, what's going on, you can go to K. Uh, sorry, that's our website, roswell-nm.gov, and uh, you'll find the link there. Also, there's a go-to-meeting link if you do want to comment uh, through there, and again, you fill out, and at the appropriate time, the mayor will will bring it up and call you on that stuff. By the way, I got to ask. It's been a while for you know because they've gotten high tech back there with buttons and everything. Are you learning all that stuff, or is it well, you need an assistant to help you with all that there? Well, too? Some, you know, <laughs> we, we've got a deputy clerk up there that can, is pretty good at directing. Good. Because I was, because I, I see it, I'm like, man, that seems kind of confusing. I, I'd be I, like, I run a radio board, and there's a lot of buttons to push. I imagine at some point you're trying to run a meeting and talk, and oh, by the way, I got to hit these buttons and this button and that button. And it gets a little, it, it could get a little muddy, I think. Well, me, it's but. it's a little different when you have something. It's a resolution or ordinance, and they all have little different rules for each one. You sure. have to learn all that. So yeah, well, good. I'm deal. a little slow, but she she keeps me straight. <laughs> Well, that's why those fine employees are there to keep guys like uh, yourself and city council in line. There. Yeah, so. we're, we're in good shape. <laughs> well, thank you, sir. As always, appreciate the visit. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, Mayor can't make it tomorrow to join us, so we'll 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 uh, we'll we'll uh, just kind of get your recaps down there. But um, hopefully, next month we can get you in on the we'll Friday, work. and we'll uh, we'll we'll see uh, talk about the good and the bad, the ugly, what comes out of that meeting. So, although come this time tomorrow, you might still be. Uh, looking at the back of your eyelids if this meeting goes late. It <laughs> so. could be. It's real possible. Well, thank you, sir. Appreciate yeah. you. We'll, uh, you. We'll see you next time, all right? Bet. All right. It is 8.14.